The True Story of Unbelievable Fake News from 1835. Batman on the Moon. Imagine waking up one morning to find out that life has been discovered on the moon. Real, intelligent life. The New York Sun had it right there in print. In 1835, the world was hooked. People crowded the streets buying every copy they could find. And the discoveries kept getting stranger. Temples of sapphire, fields of lush forests, bat men soaring across crimson landscapes. And here's the kicker. Everyone believed it. For weeks, people debated the lunar beaver people and sapphire cities. But as you'll find out in the next few minutes, the truth behind this discovery was almost as bizarre as the story itself. So buckle up as we dive into how one 19th century newspaper fooled the entire world with the tale of the moon hoax and why people actually wanted to believe it. The moon hoax of 1835 begins. It's August 1835 in New York City. The New York Sun, a small penny newspaper, has just put out a sensational headline, Great Astronomical Discoveries Lately Made by Sir John Herschel, LLD, FRS, and etc. at the Cape of Good Hope. That mouthful alone was probably enough to turn a few heads. But this wasn't just another dry scientific update. Nope. This one described discoveries on the moon, made with the new hydro-oxygen microscope, which supposedly allowed astronomers to see far beyond anything they'd seen before. Now, you'd think a story about sapphire temples and beaver people on the moon might make people a little suspicious, right? Well, in 1835, it did the exact opposite. The public was thrilled, and perhaps, predictably, so were the newsstands. The papers sold out faster than the latest Dickens serial, and people couldn't get enough of the Sun's daily mood update. Meanwhile, rival papers weren't so thrilled. You can imagine their editors sitting there fuming as they watched the New York Sun rake in readers. Some grumbled that they were losing to the Moonbat Men Gazette. Others just went straight to calling the Sun out as liars. When the truth finally started to trickle out, some papers had a field day. Sapphire temples and winged moon creatures? Fake news? They practically sneered. In true 19th century style, they published full exposés railing against the Sun's audacity. And one can only imagine the angry muttering from readers who felt they'd been duped. What were people thinking? Picture yourself back in 1835. You're an average New Yorker grabbing your daily copy of The Sun, hoping to read about, uh, I don't know, the latest shipping news or a political scandal. But then, bam, right there on the front page is the headline, Life Discovered on the Moon. You stopped at a new tracks. Life on the Moon? Did I miss something? You squint down at the article, leaning in close because, let's face it, you don't want to miss a single detail of what sounds like the story of a lifetime. You start reading. Forests on the lunar surface. Okay, sure, why not? Maybe the moon's greener than we thought, but then it says, temples made of sapphire and people with wings. And then you think, wait, are they saying these folks can fly? I mean, it's the moon after all, less gravity, right? You pause, rub your eyes a little, but keep going. And then you hit the big one, Vespertillo Homo. And you're thinking, Vesper what now? You're no Latin scholar, but you catch the word homo. And then it clicks. Batman. Batman. Living on the moon. You glance around to make sure nobody saw your jaw drop before continuing. You are so excited that you spend the rest of your day mentally designing your new backyard. 
maybe I'll get some of these moon trees in here and something with more lunar ambiance. But do they even sell those down at the nursery? You turn back to the article and finally make it to the scientists' sketches. They're describing a crimson red moonscape and a civilization more refined than her own. And you think, well, that's humbling. Here I was thinking we were doing all right here at New York. But if the Batmen have sapphire temples, I might need to rethink the whole vibe here on Earth. Expanding the hoax. Each day, the sun upped the ante. One day it was forested groves and rivers of gold. The next, glimmering temples and winged moon dwellers communing in what seemed like a philosophical discourse. Readers found themselves coming back day after day, hooked on each new discovery. This was no casual prank. The article described in astonishing detail every supposed discovery by Sir John Herschel, a well-known and respected astronomer, which only made it seem more credible. The story was spun with perfect seriousness, and Herschel himself? He was in South Africa at the time and entirely unaware that he'd been credited with discovering a lunar civilization. Did people really believe? In the days that followed, people were enthralled by the moon's new inhabitants. Some readers were apparently so taken by the idea of bat men that they started speculating on practical questions like, what might they eat? And if they'd ever make it down here to Earth, maybe there were a few who felt personally betrayed when they realized that no bat men were headed to Manhattan anytime soon. Public debate about the lunar architecture sprang up in earnest, too. You could hear folks at the coffee house debating, did you read about those sapphire temples? Real class up there on the moon, huh? <laughs> Some even discussed lunar forests as though planning a vacation. Lesson and Reflection As more details came to light, the world realized the truth. It was all one big elaborate prank, but that didn't erase the excitement that it sparked. People had believed because, well, it was a thrilling thought. Otherworldly civilizations, shimmering temples, crimson red moonscapes, all out there just waiting to be discovered. So, what can we learn from this little slice of 1835? Perhaps that humanity has always had a soft spot for tall tales. The great moon hoax reminds us that people love a good story, even if it involves beaver-bat hybrids on the moon. Yes, there are several potential ounces of wisdom to take from this remarkable case study. But for now, let's focus on just this one. Maybe the great moon hoax isn't just about fooling people. It is a reminder of how much we want to believe. Sometimes we're so eager for a new world, for new wonders, or more clinically, to hear something that confirms our bias, that we'll believe almost anything. It also reminds us to double check those headlines that seem too good or too wild to be true. Because while we're not tricked by bat men on the mood today, we're still susceptible to our fair share of modern hoaxes in a world where fake news trends just as fast as the real thing. The Great Moon Hoax is a timely reminder to keep our eyes open and our imaginations on a leash. Here's an ounce. As an actor and former president, Ronald Reagan said to Mikhail Gorbachev after negotiating an agreement concerning nuclear weapons, trust, but verified. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, thanks for watching through this entire episode, which I'm going to assume you did if you actually got to this point. And if you did that, 
wouldn't you please go ahead and give us a like and a subscribe and maybe share it with your friends? We would appreciate it because those activities on your part help to increase our visibility on the internet and we could really use that help. So thanks.